Okay. You can start the movie. <laughs> okay. I'm going to show you a movie that's got a little taste of what I do. Whoops. So this is my studio, just a little shot of my studio. That's, that's me wetting the paper, preparing to paint. Um, I get the paper saturated with water. It's high quality paper and it can take all that water. Um, I get it wet until it's soaked, but not glossy because otherwise I won't have any control over the paint. And then I start painting and I've already mixed my paints. So I never use colors straight out of the jar. I always mix colors because I like the complexity of a mixed color. And since um, the paint is being applied very wet. The pigments disperse, and I really like the way the paint unpacks itself on the paper. Um, I'm painting with acrylic with uh, a lot of matte medium in it to make it not seem as acrylic. Um, and with this kind of painting, you can only go forward. You can't go backwards. In other words, you just have to go with it and it's working or it's not working. You can't go back and fix it. So it's, it's very immersive and it's really fun to be in the middle of. I fast forwarded um, this, there's, a, there's you know, thinking here and, and just waiting to see what I wanna do. So I, I had some ideas when I started working on this, um, but then I also just go with what's happening I like to use a lot of different kinds of brushes because they all have a different uh, feeling. They can all do something differently. And here, here I'm using a, a Chinese calligraphy brush because it, it's, it's very fluid and, and fun to work with. Um, the table that I'm working on is a table I made. It's a mirror, but essentially the real reason I have it is that it's a thick piece of glass, which means I can clean it completely. It's easy to keep clean. I can keep it dust free and it takes water. So it's, it's a great painting surface. Um, this paper is 22 by 30, which is, which is a pretty big size. Um, but I, I like to be involved in, in, in that. This is the painting that you just saw me working on. Um, so you can see how, how I added a lot to it. This is another painting. If you look closely, you can see how the, the pigment is dispersing. Like you can see the pink coming out from behind the purple. Anyway, there's an, another painting. And this is a, a, a darker, darker painting that I called Underbrush. And here we can see moving in what it's like to work wet on wet, which I love. So that's a little bit of, of what, how I work and where I work. Oh, that's really uh, amazing work. Uh, thank you, Alison Cuomo for joining us. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for having me. It's fantastic. This is uh, another conversation for Taint, Taint, Taint magazine, which will be appearing soon. And those images will be in the magazine, so images of the painting. So it's really amazing work. I'm so glad um, that you were able to uh, share the work with us. Um, you were saying that, um, that some of this was planned and some of it was spontaneous. I'm curious about the, the process. Uh, okay. Yeah. Is how much I of think it out? Oh. the plan might the word plan might be an exaggeration because <laughs> it's not really a plan. I shouldn't have said plan. It's not really a plan. It's more it's more um, something I'm trying to um, inhabit and then um, have inhabited in the paper. So in other words, I take a walk every morning and I and I will have just come in the house from somewhere outside. I'm totally inspired by nature. Okay. That's my thing. And every time I go outside or I'm in nature, I 
always see something that I didn't see before, some texture, some shape, some relationship between things, um, some kind of um, an energy that it gives me. So basically that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to work with. It's not so much that I have a plan, it's, it's that I want to work with some aspect of the natural world. Okay. And so, so for example, in a given painting, will the colors you use be colors that you saw or your walk that morning or? Sometimes, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. As you're painting, uh, I know some artists listen to music. Um, do you do that as well? I listen to music and it's really annoying, not to me, but to everyone else, okay. because I'll listen to one song like loop oh, for okay. hours. Because the reason I listen to music is not so much for the music, although it is the music, it's to keep my mind at bay. Okay. So that I'm not doing too much thinking. Okay. So that um, I'm more just being physical. Oh, okay. And is that uh, um, the being physical, is that part of an aesthetic or is it just how you feel the art, uh, how the art comes to you as an artist? If that makes any sense, my question. I guess the second part of what you said, um, because since I am so inspired by the natural world and uh, we are part of it and it's such a big, world that I'm so in awe of. I won't, the only thing I know what to do with the awe that I feel is to, you know, bring it home and work with it some more through paint. Okay. So what is your uh, background as an artist? Yeah. Well, um, I've always been interested in, in colors and light and the visual part of life has always been, you know, a big part of who I am and I've always liked making things with my hands. I went to the School of Museum of Fine Arts in Boston and I got a BFA there. Then I apprenticed myself as a hand paper maker and worked for a number of artists as art artist assistant. And um, then I spent more than 20 years as a textile, Jack Hart textile designer. Um, so I've just, I've really just been making artwork my whole life. So any of the, when you were assistant or, or um, was that to any artists that we ever recognize any? Oh, um, well, Kenneth Nolan, I don't know if you know him. He's, he's passed away, but um, I was his paper making assistant. And so he, he did a whole series of work for years with handmade paper. So I helped him with that. That was fantastic. Um, what do you, uh, what did you learn in the process uh, of that apprenticeship? Uh, I learned a lot um, because being with someone who's making artwork is a very different experience than making it yourself. You know, he, uh, he was a very generous person and he shared a lot of his process, his thoughts. We had all these conversations. And it wasn't just myself, he had some other assistants also. He had, you know, a big active studio. So we were always talking about art and thinking about it. And um, so I guess th the idea of being a solitary artist, you know, this showed me another way. Okay, that sounds great. And um, so you, you were saying that you did a, you went on to do an MFA as well. BFA, BFA. You did a BFA. Yeah. Um, uh, so why do you make art? Has, is it, uh, are you um, one of these artists who has an agenda? Like, you know, you, you, you want to change the world or is it, uh, uh, is it just because it's, it's who you are and what you do or? or? Yeah, just because it's, it's who I am and what I do. I, I have, I can't change the world. You know, all I can do is um, try and appreciate the beauty that's here and what's here and, and yeah, that's yeah. It's all I know how to do. Yeah. It's and I, I often feel that artists, uh, you know, I, I'm a writer of course, but I, I feel like writers, um, musicians and other artists are in conversation with uh, 
of the artists, you know, we're, we're, we're always in conversation with one another. Do you feel that your work is in conversation with other artists, either living or, or past? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, when you say literature, you know, one of the things I, I love when I'm reading is the way a good writer can say something that I might have noticed, but never could have, you know, put my finger on it and put it into words. So it's, it's, it's like they've revealed something that's always been there that, that I felt but never could name. You know, yeah. that's a fantastic thing that literature gives me. Um, yeah, I think all the arts are amazing and really important part of our world because they, they deal with um, things through our senses that, that we need to have prioritized. And in our current culture, that's so much about numbers and um, competition and capitalism and all that. Uh, I think the arts are just critical in keeping us human. Okay. Um, are there particular themes you were you pursuing your work beyond nature or? Nope. That's okay. that's really the beginning and the end of it. I I I see my paintings as landscapes, basically that I'm inhabiting while I'm working on them. Okay. Because it's almost like I'm in there, you know, exploring. So uh, I think maybe many viewers who would see your work for the first time wouldn't necessarily know that it comes from nature, but it would, they would think, oh, well, she's an abstract expressionist, you know, uh, would that be a fair way? Uh, or or how, should, how am I asking the question? I mean, um, when you uh, do a painting, uh, how, how do you expect the, the viewer to engage with it um, you know, obviously, um, if it's in a gallery, there may be some information about it, but um, just in general, do you have expectations for how you want the viewer to engage with the, with the painting? Does that make any yes, sense? Yes, I would like the viewer to have a good experience and, um, and maybe um, have a window into something that I was experiencing or that I noticed in the world that's in the world. When I say landscape, I don't mean that it's here's the tree, here's the pond. I okay. mean, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a space. Uh, it's okay. it, because I don't think of my pictures as pictures of things. They're, okay. they're more um, kind of experiences that are now dry <laughs> and that other people can look at. I don't think of them as being representations of things, but when I say I'm inspired by nature, I'm talking about um, the multiplicity of everything that's out there, the, the um, amazing dynamism, the, the just the, the, energy. the energies. Yeah, the, the miracle of it all. I mean, yeah. I'm constantly just wowed. Well, you can see, like, even the painting on the wall behind you, you can see this tremendous energy in the painting. And, um, you know, not knowing, if, if, I, if, if I were just coming to the painting without knowing anything about it, I would just see the tremendous colors and the tremendous energies. And I would say, well, this is a, this might be a type of impressionism, you know, um, the, I'm not sure exactly what the artist was seeing that, um, but uh, I could see maybe this is a reflection of what the artist was feeling at a particular moment. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, how long did it take you to create a painting like that? How long does it take? Well, uh, so I was working at that a couple hours. Sometimes I go back in and put another layer on, you know, if I feel like it hasn't come to fruition. Um, but there's a lot of, work that I do that I don't like. So, so, so for everything that kind of works, there's a lot that doesn't work. Okay. That's uh, something that's fascinating to me as well, because I've talked to artists uh, before who don't do representational paintings necessarily. 
and they always can tell somehow when a painting is finished and um and they, they often speak about it in terms of the layers so what exactly yeah. does that mean and how, how does that whole process happen well i guess um there's a the if it's going well um there's a point at which the painting starts to have its own voice. And then my job is to not mess it up, you know, like back away or, or just let it continue with what I see is going on. It kind of takes on its own um, integrity. I don't know if that's the right word. Okay. And, 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 and so then it's done, like don't touch it anymore. That's a little bit almost like what you know the the poet Keats, uh, John Keats, famously called negative capability. Somehow, like this kind of negating of the self, so that the art can emerge on its own. You know, he was a poet, of course, but uh, I hear some of that happening in what absolutely, you're saying. absolutely. I I try and be there, um, but only because. I'm the one with the hands and mix the colors and everything, but a part of me want, it just wants to leave the room. Like, you know what I mean? Right, right. Because it's, so, I don't feel that it's really about me. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have the pleasure of doing it, but um, what I'm really trying to do is pull through everything that's already here. Like, I don't have to invent anything. The whole world is here. It's incredible. Right. I, I just have to, um, I don't know the right words. <laughs> right. And I think I know what you, you're saying. It is, um, it is amazing that the world is amazing. And sometimes we forget that, you know, that, you know, even when you live in New York City, as, as you do, that, uh, there's still this amazing world out there and uh, and the world is inexhaustible in some ways. Uh, yes. Do you feel that as an artist? Yeah. Yes, yeah. you said it. That's what yeah. I feel. I, I feel like I don't need to add anything. It's inexhaustible. It's it's just there to be um, explored and, and admired and delved into and, and learnt from. Yes, yes. Um, what advice have you been given as an artist? Um, I guess well, once somebody told me, uh, I was reluctant to call myself an artist, you know, okay. for, and, and, and somebody told me, you know, you're the one that has to say you're the artist. Like, don't wait for someone else to call you that. Stand up and say, yes, I'm an artist, you know, don't be shy about it. That was good advice. All right. And what advice would you give to aspiring artists? I would say, um, whatever you care about, follow it, do it, do it, do it, you know, and uh, don't worry about the art world. You know, have that be your secondary, third or fourth <laughs> concern. The first concern has to be what you're doing. Okay. That actually leads to my next question, which I was going to ask: How do you have a career as an artist? Um, you know, we we still have this uh, mythology about the starving artist, and there there are realities to the truth of how hard it is to succeed mm -hmm. uh, in any kind of art as an artist. You know, absolutely. So. Um, I guess for me, um, with the pandemic. I haven't been going to galleries because, you know, I, it's not really safe. I don't feel like it's safe for me. So Instagram has played an outsized role in communicating with other artists, seeing what they're doing, even though looking at your phone is just ridiculous in terms of viewing art still. So much has happened um, on Instagram that's really made a big difference for me. I've discovered a lot of other artists that I didn't know about. Um, and it's, that's been great. So it sounds like you're saying that uh, the artists should strive to, have, strive to have a social media presence. Yeah, I think, I think they do. And in fact, um, I think that's what's 
exciting about the way things are changing because it's because of that that artists now want to control their own sales more, that um, artists are stepping outside of the gallery system and trying and working on ways to connect with people who might be interested in their art, connect with each other, doing cooperative endeavors all outside of the gallery system. And that's really exciting. That's, yeah. that's the trend that I'm most excited about. Yeah, oh, okay. I wanted to ask you about some uh, current trends in the art world. And one thing I've become uh, aware of is the fact that so many celebrities now are part of the art world in the sense that they uh, all have um, an agent, let's say, who buys work for them or they own galleries and uh, that kind of thing. Do you have any particular feelings about uh, the uh, immersion of celebrities into the art scene? Is it a good thing or bad thing or what? <laughs> you know? I guess I guess it's a little bit of both. I mean, I think it's good um, that people are recognizing that art is powerful and meaningful. I think it's too bad that um, it's so commodified. Right. You know, that it, it's like buying a fancy car and then you keep it in your garage and sell it. I, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a thing to, to buy and sell. And, and that part's too bad, but I guess that's always been there. But yeah. it, ha it has allowed artists who perhaps weren't getting some of the recognition that they should have. It's, it's allowed their work to be seen by more people and that's a good thing. So I guess it's a little of both. Yeah. Are there other trends in the art world that you're following? Yeah. Um, I think the one, the one that I'm most excited about really is this change of structure of the art world per se. You know, I, th I think that's huge. And that's not gonna change after the pandemic is gone that because um, artists just realize they don't, they don't need this whole structure of right. middlemen, you know? I mean, yes, to a certain extent, but not completely. Yeah. And it's been really invigorating for people. Well, that happened in the music industry where, you know, the, the record companies, how music is, made and distributed has changed so much mm -hmm. um, you know so that's uh hopefully this will be a good thing in the art world as well so if there were um uh, you know three or four artists um that people haven't heard about but they should know who, who, who would those artists be um well i don't know you know uh one person who inspires me all the time and he's very well known so perhaps everybody knows about him already um, Andy Goldsworthy, he's a, he's a sculptor who works with um, land art, site-specific art. He's really involved in, in the natural world and he works in a really intuitive way that speaks to me very powerfully. I think he's fantastic. Um, let's see, who else currently? Well, there's, a, there's an artist that I I'm just making friends with now on Instagram, Deborah Barlow. I think she's great. Um, um, there's just a, there's a lot of people. Right, there, there, there are more people than we can name. So yeah. yeah. That feel is true about music and writing as well. So it's, um, you know, the great art is inexhaustible, it seems. So, it is. Yeah. And I, I feel like if someone sincerely um, working with, you know, what they're seriously interested in. It doesn't matter to me what field they're in, whether they're, you know, what kind of art they're doing. It, it can all mean something and be powerful. You yes. know, it's, it's all of us together. Yes. So if people want to find out more about your work, how can they do so? Well, I have a website at allisoncuomo.com and I'm on Instagram, Allison underscore Cuomo. And okay. oh, they could, e I don't know if you, yeah. So they could email me th through my website. Okay. I did mention that we'll have some of your work in the magazine and- Yeah, uh, that's so great. Thanks, Jeff. 
So thank you. I so really thank, look forward to the magazine. I'm looking forward too. So <laughs> it's been a, a lot of hard work. So, but uh, but thank you for making time for us today. Oh, and, absolutely, my pleasure, and I'm so grateful to you. Yeah, and the work again. The work is amazing. So. Um, I wanted to ask you what you're working on now, but I think we've already probably answered that question. You're, you're continuing with landscapes as you as you define them. So. Yes, what I'm doing now is trying to work in smaller, a smaller format because it's a, it's a challenge to make something small that's not diminutive, and that's uh, kind of what I'm working on now. That sounds fascinating. So, yes. Well, thank you again. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much.